Hello everyone, welcome to Java Charter, the part 2 series of JP Morgan interview. First of all, I would like to uh, apologize for being so late uploading the second part of uh, video. I was so much occupied uh, with personal and professional uh, life. So sorry for that. So let's continue uh, with the interview questions of part two. So question number 13. Uh, the interviewer asked me how will I write the code using Hibernate? What will be the steps in my DAO classes and its implementation class? So answer is, so as we know, DAO class is nothing but the data access layer. So if you are using the Hibernate, we first create the entity class where we write some setter and getter methods with annotations. Now DAO class has all the methods to interact with the database. So we use here the session and the get session method of Hibernate. So we can use method like get session dot open session. And also if we want to use the HQL, that's a Hibernate query language and want to list all the records, let's say for example, then we can use the syntax like get current session dot create query from the table, whatever the table name you have dot list. So there are various ways uh, using which you can write the uh, Hibernate code. Now moving the question to 14. What is the change in Java memory model from Java 8 onwards? So this question was asked by uh, the interviewer in the interview. So answer of this question is from Java 8 onwards Oracle has completely gotten rid of the permanent generation and replaced it with the metaspace. With Java 8 there is no perm gen so no more out of memory errors due to the perm gen. Now perm gen is part of Java heap as we know uh, which has a maximum size configured by XMS options. But in case of metaspace, which is introduced in Java 8, metaspace is not a part of heap. Rather, metaspace is part of native memory, which is called process memory, which is only limited by the host operating system. So, moving to ne next question, question number 15. What is concurrent hash map? Now, I have taken this picture uh, from the Geeks4, Geeks.org uh, website. So, you can see this. Concurrent hash map implements serializable and it, it also implements the concurrent navigable map which extends concurrent map and which extends the map. So to answer this question, concurrent hash map class provides concurrent version of the standard hash map. Concurrent hash map can be used when a high level of concurrency is required but already synchronized map is present so what is the advantage does concurrent hash map have over the synchronized map? You might get this question in mind. So to answer this, both are thread safe. The major advantage is in case of synchronized map, every write operation acquires lock on the entire synchronized map. While in case of concurrent hash map, the lock is only on the segments. I hope this answer helps. Now moving to question number 16. The interviewer asked me, let's say if I have an interface and there are many implementation of it and they are calling interface method using different object, then will it work? So to answer this, yes, you must know that from Java 8 onwards, you can also create a default methods in interface. This is just to impress the interviewer. The real answer is different classes can implement the same interface differently. They can have the different logic. This is perfectly normal as logic behind the class who implements the interface would have a different logic for the same method. Unrelated classes can implement the same interface. Now moving to question 17, what is known argument constructor so answer is no argument constructor is a constructor that does not accept any arguments as Nam suggested which is one of the constructor types in java the main purpose is to call the superclass constructor now compiler adds the default constructor which is a no argument constructor in case if you are not providing in every java classes so it's not mandatory to define a default constructor but if you are writing a hibernate persistence class JPA entities or the using the string framework to manage direct creation and the writing dependency you need to be a bit careful many of open source framework uses reflection to create an instance of object at runtime based upon the name of the class so for example when hypernet creates an instance of entities using reflection it uses the class dot new instance method which requires a no argument constructor to create an interface 
it's effectively equivalent to the new entity this method throws instance situation exception if it doesn't found any no argument constructor in the entity class and that's why it is advisable to provide a non argument constructor now i would suggest you to learn more about by googling this because uh, no argument constructor is not just limited to this answer now moving to question number 18 what is a fail fast and fail safe collection now to answer this fail fast collection throws exception but fail safe collection doesn't throw exception array list and hash map collections are the example of fail fast iterator if we talk about the fail safe then copy on write and concurrent modification are the example of a fail safe iterator the fail fast iterator aborts the operation as soon as it exposes failures and stops the entire operation comparing ratively fail safe iterator doesn't abort the operation in case of a failure indeed instead it tries to avoid the failure as much as possible now moving to question number 19 how a null pointer can be checked using java 8 optional now again this is a very big topic and i would suggest you guys to learn more on java 8 optional but to answer this question java 8 has introduced an optional class which is a great way to avoid the null pointer exception in java optional api implements functional programming and uses functional interface java 8 has introduced java.util.optional which is a singleton class for this usage there are three ways to create an optional first create an optional from not null object so optional.of not null in the argument create optional from a nullable object so optional.of null label maybe a null and create optional from a null object which is optional.empty now moving to question number 20 Is there any way to not to implement interface methods in Java? Now to answer this it is mandatory to implement all the methods in class that implements an interface the interface could also specify some methods as default and provide the corresponding method implementation within the interface definition this default methods need not to be mentioned while implementing the interface so this is from Java 8 onwards Now moving to question number 21 which is the last question Uh, which was the last question asked by the interviewer what is serial version uid in the java so to answer this serial version uid is a unique identifier for each classes jvm uses it to compare the versions of the classes ensuring that the same class was used during serialization and is loaded during the deserialization specifying the one gives more control through jvm does generate one if you don't specify the value generated can differ between the different compilers so it is better to provide your own serial version uid yeah that's it uh, thank you all uh, from uh, java charter i hope uh, this interview series uh, you will find helpful thank you guys see you bye bye